Hey everyone, welcome to the lecture for counting. So sounds easy, it is kind of tricky. All right, so we're gonna start off with the addition rule. According to the addition rule or the addition principle, if one event can occur in M ways and a second event with no common outcome can occur in N ways, then the first or second event can occur in M plus N ways. That sounds weird, let's look at an example. So if we have two vegetarian entree options and five meat entree options, the total number of entree options is two plus five, it's seven. So you're just combining all of your options. That's the addition rule. It's pretty straightforward. The multiplication rule or the multiplication principle is one where you have a first event and a second event. So if one event can occur in M ways and a second event can occur in N ways, after the first event, then the two events can occur in M times N ways. So let's check out an example here. If we have three shirts and four pants, how many outfits can you make? So assuming that the first event is choosing a shirt and the second event is choosing pants, we're gonna have four times three outfits, which is 12 outfits. If we have six ice cream flavors and three different cones, then the total way to make a scoop on a cone would be six times three, single scoop. Uh, combinations. And we don't have to limit this to just two events. Let's think more about ice cream. So if we have to have the same six ice cream flavors and we have the same three different cones, but now we want a double scoop and we can have two scoops of the same ice cream, then the way that we can determine how many possible combinations there are is going to be six times six times three. So that first six is the first scoop, the second six is the second scoop. And because I can have repeat flavors, I'm not limiting myself on the second scoop. So I get 108 total choices. Now, if I say, okay, I can do a double scoop, but I can't have repeat flavors. What happens is we have six options for the first scoop, but now on the second scoop, we can't duplicate. So now we have only five options for the second flavor. And then we have three for the cones giving us 90 options here. So in general, what you wanna do is you wanna write down how many options you have for each step. And then you wanna multiply them all together. So in this little generalization, we have three things going on, but you might have 10 things or a hundred things or five things, whatever. So let's look at this example. How many four digit numbers greater than or equal to 6,000 can be created from the digits zero through nine without repetition? So we have four digits. So one, two, three, four positions need to be filled. We can think of this as event one, event two, event three, and event four. In the first position, because our number has to be 6,000 or greater, the first digit has to be six, seven, eight, or nine. And that gives us four options. For the second position, even though we have digits zero through nine, that's 10 digits, we can't repeat the first digit. So now we only have nine options. And then we only have eight options. And then we only have seven options. So you can see how this depletion happens because we're not allowing repetition. So for us, we would have four times nine times eight times seven or 2016 options. All right, factorials. So factorials uh, is the exclamation mark, is the bang, whatever. It just says, hey, whatever number you have, multiply everything that came before it. So 10 factorial is 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So everything that came before 10, all the whole numbers, multiply them together. Uh, five factorial, five by four by three by two by one. You could have a hundred factorial. I'm not going to say all those numbers. I'm not even going to write all those numbers. Notice my adorable ellipsis in the middle. So we understand that I'm going from 100 all the way down to one through multiplication. And then we have a special case that will rarely come up for us, but good to know is that zero factorial is equal to one. So in general, when you see an exclamation mark, it just means, hey, write down all the integers that come, came before it. 
um, all the way down to one and then multiply them together. So, all right, you're gonna be asked to mostly deal with factorials and fractions, and that's gonna involve you simplifying stuff. So if I have 10 factorial over 15 factorial, on the numerator, I have 10 by nine by eight, da, 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 three, two, one. And in the denominator, I start at 15 and go all the way down to one. And we can see that there's a lot of cancellation here. So all the numbers in red, we see they're in the numerator as well as the denominator, meaning that they can cancel out. And what we're left with is just one over 15 by 14 by 13 by 12 by 11, leaving us in simplified form as one over 360,360. We may also end up with more than one factorial in our denominator, and we'll see why at the end of this video. But for now, let's just practice the simplification. So in the numerator, eight down to one. And then in the denominator, we have three factorial. So that gives us three times two times one. And then we also have five factorial. So that's five by four by three by two by one. And we still have a lot of great cancellation. So notice the five factorial from the denominator and part of the eight factorial in the numerator have cancellation in red. So what we would be left with here is just eight times seven times six over three times two times one. And we can go ahead and simplify this further. Notice that the three and two in the denominator form a six and we also have a six in the numerator. So those will cancel out and we'll be left with eight by seven over one, giving us 56. So we need factorials in order to talk about combinations and permutations. Combinations are instances where we wanna select something from a group and we don't care what the order is. So you might think about toppings on a pizza or uh, ice cream scoops on a Sunday. And then permutations is where we're gonna select items from a group, but order does matter. So think about things like you're finishing a race. You wanna know who finished first, second, or third, or maybe you're looking at presidents, vice presidents, treasury, secretary, whatever. And so the position matters, the order matters. So if we have a group of five people, how many ways can we form a group of three? This would be a combination because I don't care. There's no hierarchy here. Uh, I just need three people. So if we have five people, Mary, Gary, Larry, Sherry, and Terry, I want to choose three of them. These are all the ways I can choose three people. So I could have Mary, Gary, Larry, Mary, Gary, Sherry, Mary, Gary, Terry, Mary, Larry, Sherry, Mary, Larry, Terry, Mary, Sherry, Terry, Gary, Larry, Sherry, Gary, Larry, Terry, Gary, Sherry, Terry, Larry, Sherry, Terry. And so there's 10 ways to do that. It's very exciting. All right. If we don't want to list this all out, which of course we don't wanna do that. There is a formula for combinations and notice it involves your beloved factorial, which is why we needed to review on that. So what you have here is little n on top that represents the total number of things you can choose from. So in our case, we had five people. So we our little n is five. And r is going to be how many things we're taking out. So we wanted to choose three people. So for us, R is three. Hence, we have five factorial divided by three factorial by five minus three factorial. Okay, easy math, five minus three is two. So we have five factorial over the product of three factorial with two factorial. And we just did an example of how to do these. So we could easily compute here, once we've mastered this, that it is 10, which we saw in our list. Let's compare this to a permutation. Oh, might I add the notation is 5C3 for a combination. Five being the number of things you have, C combination, three, the number of things you're taking out. Okay, so let's compare this to a permutation. Same group of five people, we still wanna form a group of three, but now order matters. So let's say, for example, we wanna do president, vice president, and secretary. So we still have Mary, Gary, Larry, Sherry, and Terry, but now we have positions to fill. So the first position, we have five options because I could choose Mary, Gary, Larry, Sherry, or Terry to be my president. 
Now, I've once I've selected my president, I only have four people to choose from. So for my vice president, whomever is I just chose for president, they're no longer in the pool. That's why it's four. And similarly, when I move on to secretary, I already have my president and vice president named. So I only have three people left to choose from. And so this feels very much like the multiplication rule or the multiplication principle we talked about at the beginning of this video. And if we were doing it that way, we would just do five times four times three. And that is correct. This is the correct way to do it. But we can also get extra fancy. So we have a formula for permutations. It, feels very similar to combinations. Again, n is the total number of things to choose from. R is the number of things we are choosing. So we have five people, Mary, Gary, Larry, Sherry, and Terry, and we want to choose three of them to fill these spots. So five over five minus three factorial. Again, the easy math is that five minus three is two. And we know how to simplify this. So five factorial over two factorial is going to give us 60. So notice the main difference between combination and permutation is that permutations really give you a lot more options because you have the positions to fill. So you could have the same three people. Let's say you had Mary, Gary, and Larry. That's now different from Gary, Mary, Larry, which is also different from Larry, Gary, Mary, and Larry, Mary, Gary. <laughs> so the order matters here, which is why you end up with so many extra options. And the last thing we need to add is just notation. So as before in combinations, when we had 5C3 for combination, here we would have 5P3, P being for permutation. 